of nature. You, well, See, what you're trying to say is you, what you're trying to you say is the that there's a cla- there, that there could be classness as an abstract object, uh, object without mm. the uniformity of nature. That's not my question. I'm saying if we're talking about an apple, okay, how does mm-hmm. that apple possess the class of appleness if there's no uniformity of nature? Well, I mean, how could a particular apple have a property of being an apple? I mean, that does, yeah, a, a, a single thing instantiating a property. Yeah, that would have to have uniformity of nature. The class itself doesn't require. Okay. okay so, so, so can can you have can you have particulars that actually possess classes without a uniformity of nature, Alex? You can't have concrete particulars instantiating things like physical properties without the uniformity of nature. No, I guess you could have numbers having abstract properties. Yeah, Alex, you're but, you're just giving me double talk. I'm not okay. giving you double talk. Yeah, all. you are. No, yeah, you are. What no, I want to know is, can you, can you have an app possess the class, the class of appleness without the uniformity of nature? Well, I mean, I'm trying to understand your question. It seems to me, right, let you give me a few seconds to explain why I think this, right? An apple is a concrete particular. It's appleness, the properties it has, green, whatever, taste, blah, blah, blah. All of those things are uh, embedded in a causal nexus. And if there were no causal nexus, if there were no surrounding environment in which it was existing i don't think it would make sense to say that it had any properties at all any concrete object can't have causally interactive properties unless there's an environment that it's interacting in right so i don't think you could have an apple in a kind of sea of kind of white noise or something i don't think that makes any sense so i I, i'm agreeing i think that you can't have those types of properties the sorts of things apples have you know its shape its taste it's what it looks like Unless there was um, a uniformity of nature, your your phrase, a causal nexus in which it subsists. So, I mean, does that, is that clear? If you think that's double talk, no, it's then, not clear. Yeah. I, you know, I ask this question every single day, day after day, months on end, to atheists. I want to know: Can you? Can the apple possess? Be a member uh, of without there being the uniformity of nature for that apple? Simple question, Alex. Yeah, I feel like I just answered the the answer to that is can can an apple have a property without without a uniformity of nature? In a, in a world the where there's not a uniformity of nature, can, can can an apple possess the class the, the class of appleness? Okay, so I mean, just for the sake of moving the conversation on, I mean, so this, this, you want it to be a yes or no? So the answer is I guess no, right? If that makes you. Right. That's acceptable. So the intelligibility. So the intelligibility. When you invoke classes of things of concrete particulars, it requires the precondition of the uniformity of nature. Otherwise, you're not going to have intelligibility for the actual classness of concrete particulars. So does your world? Does your world provide for the uniformity of nature, Alex? Does my world provide? I think that nature is uniform. Yeah, if that's what you're asking. And and do you do you do you have, can you uh, uh, account for that? Your operates in a law like way. By what means do you justify that? What's well, uh, what is it that is like ultimately like static? Like that what is it that is ultimately static that will provide for that, Alex? Well, I don't know what you mean by provide for it. Like I think there are laws of nature, right? And I think I can obviously see uniformities. You, you can't you can't see universals, Alex. Uniformities. I can see regular. I can see things happening. No, the same you can, way no, you can no, you can you could see consistencies, but that doesn't that mm. that doesn't necessitate that this that this these are these are laws. Just like the chicken who gets. No, I didn't say it necessitated. Off. Okay, so yeah, so, I didn't say it necessitated. So do you have a justification? Do you have a justification that your world provides for the uniformity of nature? Well, I mean. You won't accept it as a justification, of course, right? But I mean, I can see them around me. That's begging the question. Well, no, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Sure, it absolutely is. Mm-hmm. Why is that then? Uh, because what you're what you're saying is is the whole conforms to the part of your experience. That's like the chicken reasoning the law of the farmer. And on the first day of its 16th year, the farmer comes and cuts his head off. Oops. 
Okay, so look, think about it like this. If there were no laws of nature, would I be able to even form the thought that there might be laws of nature? Would that no. thought be impossible? No, you wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to form that thought. Right. Okay, so there you go. There's a transcendental argument for the uh, regularities of nature because I can form the thought, right? And it would yeah. be impossible to do that but, unless there but were. You, but, you see, but you see, these are these so there you occurrences. Go. It's not yeah, but the, uh, yeah, but your, your thoughts, are they spontaneous occurrences? Because you're presupposing when you talk about thoughts that there's a reasoning process. What I want to know from you is, is the world around you, is it a world that where there's something that's static, that provides for continuity and some level of actual uniformity, as opposed to the illusion of it? Maybe, well, maybe, I, I in, your world, is, yeah. maybe in your world, is. the spontaneity that is occurring has produced the illusion that, that you have thought. But you're not actually having thought. What I want to know is the world that you live in, yeah, is it a ch- is, is, it, well, is, is, is your world governed by something that is static or is, your, is the world around you just spontaneous chance occurrences? Which, which world do you live in, Alex? Well, <clears throat> okay, so you said a few, lots of different questions there. So look, um, I think I live in a world where there are regularities, right? And I think that if I lived in a world, if I was as radically deceived as you were saying, I might be then I would also be deceived as to whether you're even asking me these questions or whether those questions even make yeah, sense. Yeah, but I don't, but you see, right? you if see, I assume deception you would be a process, wait, wait Alex. A minute, wait a minute, you interrupted me mid, midway through a sentence. So if you just let me get, right. If I was wrong about your questions having any meaning, then they wouldn't have any meaning. I think they did, right? But if I was wrong about that, deceived as you say I might be, then you're not actually asking me any questions. There is no threat in any way. If you are asking me questions, if that's intelligible, then there must be regularities. So actually your questions, the very notion of sceptical questioning itself, would be impossible if there were no regularities of nature. Yeah, that's because and I'm that's operating from the God world, Alex. Argument. Yeah, but no, you see, I'm not, I'm not a global a skeptic, Alex. Argument. Okay, I'm well, not a global skeptic, Alex. Neither am I. Right? Good. Then Neither can you I. tell me what is it? What is the ultimate precondition that's going to provide for the intelligibility of the particulars that you say? What What is it going to be? Are you just going to appeal to uh, uh, brute facts, or is there or is there something that's ultimate that's going to uh, provide for intelligibility, Alex? Yeah, I just uh, see. The thing is, I don't know what "provide for intelligibility" means. Pro- I can provide for my family, but I don't know what to provide for intelligibility. Yeah, is there means. something? Is there something ultimately static that provides for actual continuity as to the illusion of continuity? Which so is just said in your the world, word Alex? Provides is is weirding me out there, and you just said. So it you're again, you're nitpicking, Alex. Right. You're nitpicking, well, and not, you're being I'm, in a very sophisticated way. You're being uh-huh, in, in okay. a sophisticated way evasive. Now, is there ultimately, so in your view, I don't know what you, since you right, since you deny the existence of God, right? In order for mm-hmm. you to affirm or deny anything, mm-hmm. you're going you're going to have to presuppose that you have reason. And then in order for there to be to be reason, you're going to have to have a world where the, there is, is some continuity. What I want to know is, what is it that will be the basis of any continuity? Do you have anything in mind for that? Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I have a PhD in philosophy. I've studied a lot of philosophy. I just, I don't know what you mean, right? And that might be my fault, right? But it also might be that you're not, you know, those words are not clear. You think you? I think I'm being a bun. You see, you want to know okay, something? You think Alex? you're being I mean, clear? I, I like you, Alex. Don't get me wrong. I'm giving you a hard time, but you should mm-hmm. be able to handle these questions instead of just being so evasive. Given that you have a PhD in philosophy and I don't. Sure. What okay, I want to well, know is, you <laughs> deny you deny what is ultimate is a personal absolute God who gives rise to dependent states known as creation. So you, you, for you, you have this, this world around you of just uh, particulars. What I want to want to know is, is there anything that is ultimately static I, no, and absolute no, no, no. that I gives rise to these? World, just particulars. I don't think there's just a world of particulars around. Me. No, I want to know, is there anything that is ultimate and non-dependent that provides for dependent states, Alex? 
Yeah, well, it's I mean, not God. What would that be? I can tell you what I do think, right? I think there are abstract objects. I think there are laws of nature. Yeah, you're being evasive again. You're being real well, cute and you're being evasive. I, okay. Since you reject that God is that which is ultimate and unconditionally non dependent and is the origin point of all dependent states, what I want to know from you is what do you conceive of in your world? What is it that would be ultimate? That, that it's going to provide for any dependent states, including your concepts of causality, uniformity of nature, and classes of things. Do you, do you have in your world, okay, the way you view the world, is there anything that is ultimate that provides for dependent states? Well, I think there are necessary truths. I think there are abstract objects that exist necessarily. Is that something that's ultimate? N no. Would an abstract object stand in causal relations, Alex? Abstract objects don't stand in causal relations, no. Okay, so what I'm asking you, what is it in your view that is ultimate, the reason why anything at all exists that provides for any uh, dependent states in your world? What is it? But it's I don't know God, what so the what reason is... that everything exists is. I don't know what if if there even is okay. So so, so basically then so then basically then you're claiming that when you speak forth propositions and putative facts referring to particulars, it all comes from a chance system. It just is. No, I'm not saying it comes from a chance system. There might be something that's ultimate, but I don't know if there is. Well, then if you don't know, then it's just, then what you're just appealing to, just, it just stuff just happens. I don't know if it just happens or whether there's some ultimate ground that makes it happen. Well, wh wh which, which, which is it? Because I don't know. Just, well, if you don't know, then, then, you're, you're, then you're just simply relying, just stuff happens. I'm not. If I said I knew and it was just there was no ultimate ground and stuff just happens, that would be me. Right. So, so in other words, you have no foundation. So you then, so therefore, you don't have a basis, an ultimate what? basis for any for, for any dependencies that you assert. I mean, I don't. Perhaps if that's if that if those if that's what those. Do you know? Words mean you, to you know? You, then I guess you, so. Yeah, and you know what you I said? So. What, what you have just communicated, and everyone in the room heard it. You said you don't know what is what is ultimate, right? I don't. So what that, what what that I, said was, is, I don't know why everything exists, right? I mean, that's a big fucking. That's mystery. right. You don't, don't know, know what is ultimate, right? Yeah, I think there's mystery that I, things I don't know. Right. Like, so, so in other what? words, so what you're what you're saying what you're saying is you have dependent facts, but they don't depend upon anything identifiable. No, I, you're telling me that I'm picking the, the, the idea do that your there dependent are facts, dependent facts. Do, I mean, do, I your, do your dependent facts that you invoke, like apple and tree and reason, right? Do, are, do these do dependencies, do they derive from something ultimately, Alex? Or do these so-called dependent facts, they just exist because of I don't know? They obviously don't exist because of I don't know. That doesn't even make any sense. Phrase, well then, 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 why are why are there recurring consistencies, Alex? Because you're the, you're very in, invoking things. You're going to be invoking classes that you apply to particulars. Okay. Now, are are the are these particulars that you use are exemplars of ca uh, classes? Is that because there's something ultimately static, or is this just all in a chance system? Which is it? No, I think there are abstract objects. I said that's... Well, yeah, see, here we go again with the abstract object. I didn't ask you about abstract objects. I'm talking to you about what is it that ultimately provides for your invoking of dependent facts? What is it? Because they don't explain themselves. Yeah. I, I, my ultimately... What, was, what did you say? Appealing to dependent facts. Are, you invoke a series of recurring depends, uh, uh, statements of dependency. Now, I want to know what the framework is that they have intelligibility in. But your answer is you don't know. Yeah, See, as part of the problem so you, here is that, like, I think if we could just have this conversation without it, you, you have an insistence that the jargon is yours, right? And that makes it very difficult for me to engage with it. I mean, I could be a dick and talk about, like, you know, stuff jargon filled sentences and you know I'm maybe being, everyone would think i was being I'm really not clever, using like, esoteric jargon alex you're using words in your own way and i'm finding it very difficult to follow but what word what word am i using that you're having trouble with i'm not i'm not t talking in double speak and d using philosophy well, or nomenclature frankly 
Like, well, give well. me an example. I ask you, you what do you what, about what is it that ultimately exists that will provide for dependent states? A dependent state is any fact that is derivative. That's not jargon spew, Alex. For? What does provide for mean in that context? It means the reason the reason why it exists. If the, if it doesn't exist so in and it of again, itself. Though, without the, say it again then without provide for so I can yeah. track it. Yeah. When it comes to dependent facts, what is the what is the reason contextually why dependent facts exist, Alex? Okay, so I I mean a reason I think I think there are reasons why specific content can dependent facts exist. Like I said before, you know, why is there a rug on the floor? That type of thing. But you don't like that answer. So what type of answer? Right, hold, hold on one second. Hear? My headset went out. Hold on. Give me thirty seconds. You guys know Darth's wife loved him. All right, I got my head set up. I'm running. I want to know is that when you speak forth facts, those facts mm -hmm. will either be dependent or not dependent. I want to know what the final f frame of reference or context is when you speak forth dependent facts. Since you don't accept that God, God is that framework, yeah, I want to know final, what is. So final ultimate context, that, that's a phrase I don't understand. You've I've just me. described it in different words. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not yeah, nomenclature so, thro throwing, Alex. Perhaps yeah, if but, you give him, I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson's answer to it that may illuminate the meaning to him. What do you mean, Parakeet? Um, didn't he say? I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson when someone asked him a similar question. He said, "The foundation of reality, or something like that, is forces." Do you recall that something along those? Oh lines? yeah, somebody somebody asked it. What what is it at at at, at a foundational level? Level why anything exists, and Neil deGrasse Tyson said forces, by which he, I, he probably meant uh, the fluctuating of quantum energy. What I want to know from you is, what is it that ultimately exists that's going to provide the the final context for any fact, a fact that is derivational or dependent? Okay, you're gonna give me two minutes. I'll be right back. You see, folks, it doesn't matter if you don't have a high school diploma or even if you have a PhD in philosophy like Alex does here. The atheists are still evasive. And he accuses me of nomenclature dropping. I mean, really? <laughs> you laugh and yet your entire worldview is circular. Yeah, well, if you want to take me on, you can wait till I get done with Alex. Okay? Well, I'd be more than happy, Darth, to prove your worldview is circular. Okay. Well, oh, I didn't realize it, it was you. Okay. Yeah. Now your server muted and deafened. And the and the the troll continues. Chloe the pervert. Okay. Anybody have remarks or questions until Alex gets back? Yeah. So I I am. Oh, he's back. I'm back for a few minutes. Yeah. So I think you yeah. are. I think I, so your question is just something like, um, well, I think you want, you want me to explain something like an ontological ground floor. Like what's the, this is my rephrasing, see if it fits, right? Like what's the most foundational level of reality, right? And because I think that when you're talking about um, dependent, non-dependent facts, I think I understand what you mean in terms of like things existing being dependent on other things existing. Right, like I think the um, I think the physical properties of the apple um, depend on the causal environment in which they operate. So I, so I think that the causal environment uh, is a sort of prerequisite for the apple existing. Okay. So, I can so do you, that so do you believe matter, energy, energy right? causality, and laws of nature are what is ultimately static that's going to provide for the intelligibility of dependent facts? Is that it? I think that. I don't think that the cliche idea of matter and energy and you know, space-time, I think that's, um, not, that's not right. 
I think that's just a kind of cartoon version of physics, right? So I don't believe in that. I don't Alex, have that what is your, what's your thing. ultimate frame of reference of why there are facts at all, Alex? Yeah, Since so it's not God, what reference. is it, Alex? I just Alex? don't think I have an ultimate. I think that you're asking me a question. The difficulty is that, like, I just don't think I, re I have that outlook. But then you don't it's have intelligibility for facts, things. Alex, because well, when I per when okay. I pursue it, when you give me when you speak forth dependent facts, and I say, well, what makes that a facts? And you give me a, a proximate contextual explanation. At a certain point, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna stop, and you're gonna say, well, I don't know. So your facts have no ultimate yeah, basis in them. Well, just having a, you know not knowing everything doesn't mean <laughs> that's I don't care. You know, yes, I don't know everything. I don't see how you have scored a significant okay, point. Okay, but do you? Yeah, well, then the point is, do you even know one fact? Because in order to know a fact, you're gonna you're gonna have to have its context. A fact without context is no fact at all. Can you have a fact yeah. without context, Alex? Yeah, I think I have context, but not ultimate context. No, then you don't have context at all because all you're simply yeah, doing no, I, is you're explaining one dependent I, fact by another dependent fact. Well, I, I, but that second or third or fourth context. Why? So why? Because well, then, then, then you're then you're just going to finally stop at a brute fact, and it, it just it just is. Well, the level of uh, depend like where like, so like, let's not switch between ontology and and epistemology. Is, is your Alex? Is your final stopping out, point? Is, is your final stopping speak, point? Uh, because something speak, is uh, static. Uh, yeah, but you're speak, filibustering, Alex. Well. I can just go, you know, we don't have to do this. I don't think it's very productive anyway, is it? No, you're filibustering. Okay, I'm filibustering. Like, well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be as helpful as I can. You know, we don't have to do this. I, no, no, I don't, I, don't th I, no, I don't think that you're ill-intentioned. I don't think that of you at all. But when I smell okay, filibustering, so I'm going to call it out. Sure, that's fine, okay? But you're actually, you are actually over-talking me. No, that's easily as bad as Yeah, because you're filibustering. Okay, well, I don't think I am. Alex, what is the ultimate frame of reference or context that's going to provide meaning and intelligibility to any facts that you tell me? Do you have anything, Alex? Yeah, that, that just sounds, honestly, that just sounds unintelligible to me, that question. Are you you, you got to get closer to your mic. Yeah, the question honestly sounds unintelligible to me. You're asking me what the flibbertib is. Honestly, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I don't know what you mean. I enjoy talking with you. I enjoy the... the oh, I like talking with fro, you too. Right? But I'm not, I'm not going to bullshit you. If I knew what you meant, I would try and answer it. I'm not going to pull a weak, lame-ass move of just pretending I don't understand because I'm like getting... I don't, well, I don't, I don't, whatever, I, right? I, I don't, I just don't, I don't know what you mean. That. Yeah, okay. I, so I, I don't know what I you wanna mean. Know, I want to know, does the meaning and intelligibility of facts come from some ultimate static fact or that you, you, it's the intelligibility of facts comes from a stopping point where other facts just exist without without right, hold on hold on i'll be back in a, two minutes two minutes all right see it makes no difference whether you have a phd in philosophy or or not when you ask people to explain their world without God, it's the same thing, whether they have a PhD in philosophy or not. Yeah, typical atheist. Yeah, but to be fair to Alex, Alex is not your typical atheist, okay? Because because he has the uh, academic background, he, he, he's not sleazy and deceitful like like most atheists are now do i think he was filibustering a bit yeah i do but at least he's more straightforward than your usual atheist so i i wouldn't call alex your t a typical atheist i think you're liberal, but that's just my opinion see he and other atheists they just don't have a frame of reference for facts and then when you confront them about that, they, they, they want to scurry down some semi-related rabbit trail. Because if they say, oh, I have context for my facts, at a certain point, they're going to have a stopping point. You're going to say, is that what's ultimately static? 
or is that just is is your final contextual frame of reference for facts is it just simply it just is there's no rhyme or reason it just it just is it just simply exists right then you have a chance system Well, anybody's free to comment or jump in while Alex is AFK. Well, didn't very, he very, already say very he didn't complicated. Know what he... You guys tried that Popeye chicken sandwich yet? Uh, didn't he already say he doesn't know what the ultimate context is, but he also doesn't think he needs it? Yeah, that's exactly what he said. So what, what, he, what he's saying is he can have dependent facts that don't depend upon anything ultimately, which is incoherent. It's a dependent fact that doesn't, uh, it, it, it exists, it has intelligibility without reference to anything ultimately. That's not coherent. Now, earlier he tried a transcendental line, line of reasoning, but the point is, the question is simply this. Of course we both presuppose that we have intelligibility, but whose worldview provides for that? Notice how he tried, wanted to evade the whole worldview question. Someone in chat is asking for an elaboration on... Um... Um, what you said earlier about um, dependent facts needing a context, an ultimate context yeah, for intelligibility. If, e, e, either, either, either a fact, either a, a putative fact will either be dependent or it won't be dependent. In other words, it'll be ultimate. It doesn't depend upon anything independent to itself or its existence. Now, if people are going to give, give me facts, I want to know why they are exist. Now, merely giving me several layers of proximate contextual explanations may seem fine, but the final layer I want to know, is that ultimate? Is that static? Or does that most final layer of context that provides for the intelligibility of the, of the fact in question, it, does it just simply exist with no reason at all? It just, just, it just, it just happened to exist in chance? Or is, 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 does that exist because that there's something ultimate and static that provides for all these contextual layers? So either you have a chance system or you don't have a chance system. Because if you're going to have intelligible dependent facts, you're not going to have them in a chance system. Because there's no reason why the, a, anything exists. This stuff just pops into existence. Now, if, if, if he's not in a chance system so that he can have intelligibility for the things that he says, I want to know what the final frame of reference is. What is it? He doesn't have one. He admitted it. But he wants to maintain that he can have intelligibility for words and things like that in a grand system where he doesn't know why anything is or why things happen. And you'll notice he subtly tried to change the conversation because he, you know, is sophisticated. He's, he has a PhD in philosophy. But when you stay focused in a biblically transcendental way. No, it, that's not a straw man. That's what he said, dude. Oh, I, I, I've said that, that. Not only I said that to Alex directly while he was here, I've said it to him on other occasions as well. Just so you know, Tartartus, this is about the 10th or 11th time Alex and I have debated. Okay? I'm, I am at a major disadvantage when it comes to Alex Malpass. 
I don't have a PhD in philosophy. He does. See, they have no answers. Even a PhD in philosophy, he can't explain why his facts are intelligible. And then when I tried to ask him about the intelligibility of an apple, that particular on the counter, uh, p possessing the class, now then he wants to talk about uh, abstract objects. See how he was subtly changing the subject? We're talking about concrete objects, how and why they possess classness. And he tries to change the issue to there being classes in terms of abstract objects. And b by the way, for those of you in real Linda, abstract objects would be things like numbers. Don't get me wrong. I like Alex. Alex is a really, really smart dude. Any comments, questions? Well, there's a bunch of comments in the chat. Well, I'm not looking at the screen right now. I'm actually working. So if you could read them to me. I'd... Sure, I can. Um, Tartarus says, oh, wait, uh, I skipped one. John Burdian, Burdian. Maria Dan says, if there's no answer, is that an answer? Why does there have to be an ultimate? Because if, you, if, if you're going to take the position that there is no God, right, then you're, the, then you're claiming that the not God worldview is going to provide for intelligibility when you speak forth any facts. Right? This is the implicit claim of the, of the atheist, that they can have intelligibility for invoking facts without reference to God as the all-conditioner, as the, as the, as the, the final uh, frame of reference for facts. So they want to believe that facts can and do exist, and they can be meaningful and intelligible in a frame of reference that doesn't include God. Well, then I want to know what that frame of reference is. Well, Alex Malpass said he doesn't have one, but he wants to maintain he can have meaning for facts without ultimate context. No, you can't. Uh, Tartarus says, Malpass saying that he doesn't know the ultimate context epistemically is not the same as the claim that there isn't one. Uh, yeah, so what? So what he what he what he what he's saying is, I can have intelligibility for facts without referencing God. Well, no, you can't. What he wants to say is, look, how how do you how do you show the falsity of A by demonstrating not A? Alex's position is not just simply unbelief. Alex's position is no absolute personal creator God exists. Notice he tried to shy away from answering that. Well, how are you going to show that the ultimacy of reality, whatever is ultimate that provides for all dependent facts, is an impersonal absolute? How do you identify what that is in order to show that there's no God? Did Alex address that? No. Can any atheist address that? No. Okay, so Malpass just messaged me. That is it. He's uh he's not coming back right now. That that that's okay. So that just goes to show you people who've said that I only pick on noobs and uneducated white belt. Alex has a PhD in philosophy.